The Mathematical Analysis of Logic by George Boole of the Solution of Elective Equations In whatever way an elective symbol considered as unknown may be involved in a proposed equation, it is possible to assign its complete value in terms of the remaining elective symbols considered as known. It is to be observed of such equations that from the very nature of elective symbols they are necessarily linear, and that their solutions have a very close analogy with those of linear differential equations. Arbitrary elective symbols in the one occupying the place of arbitrary constants in the other. The method of solution we shall in the first place illustrate by particular examples, and afterwards apply to the investigation of general theorems. Given open brackets 1 minus x close brackets y equals 0, or y's are x's, to determine y in terms of x. As y is a function of x, we may assume y equals vx plus v prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets, such being the expression of an arbitrary function of x, the moduli v and v prime remaining to be determined. We have then open brackets 1 minus x close brackets, open brackets vx plus v prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets close brackets equals 0. Or, on actual multiplication, v prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets equals 0. That this may generally be true without imposing any restriction upon x, we must assume v prime equals 0. And there being no condition to limit v, we have y equals vx, 67. This is the complete solution of the equation. The condition that y is an elective symbol requires that v should be an elective symbol also, since it must satisfy the index law, its interpretation in other respects being arbitrary. Similarly, the solution of the equation x, y equals 0 is y equals v, open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, 68. Given open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, z, y equals 0, all y's which are z's are x's to determine y. As y is a function of x and z, we may assume y equals v, open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, open brackets, 1 minus z, close brackets, plus v prime, open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, z, plus v double prime x, open brackets, 1 minus z, close brackets, plus v triple prime zx, and substituting, we get v prime, open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, z equals 0, whence v prime equals 0. The complete solution is therefore y equals v, open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, open brackets, 1 minus z, close brackets, plus v double prime x, open brackets, 1 minus z, close brackets, plus v triple prime xz, 69. v prime, v double prime, v triple prime, being arbitrary elective symbols. And the rigorous interpretation of this result is that every y is either a not x and not z, or an x and not z, or an x and z. It is deserving of note that the above equation may, in consequence of its linear form, be solved by adding the two particular equations with reference to z and x, and replacing the arbitrary constants with each involved by an arbitrary function of the other symbol. The result is y equals x phi of z plus open brackets 1 minus z close brackets psi of x 70. To show that this solution is equivalent to the other, it is only necessary to substitute for the arbitrary functions phi of z, psi of x, their equivalents, wz plus w prime open brackets 1 minus z close brackets, and w double prime x plus w triple prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets, we get y equals wxz plus open brackets w plus w double prime close brackets x open brackets 1 minus z close brackets plus w triple prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus z close brackets. 
In consequence of the perfectly arbitrary character of W prime and W double prime, we may replace their sum by a single symbol W. Whence, y equals Wxz plus W prime x open brackets 1 minus z close brackets plus W triple prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus z close brackets, which agrees with 69. The solution of the equation Wx open brackets 1 minus y close brackets z equals 0 expressed by arbitrary functions is z equals open brackets 1 minus w close brackets phi of xy plus open brackets 1 minus x close brackets psi of wy plus y chi of wx 71. These instances may serve to show the analogy which exists between the solutions of elective equations and those of the corresponding order of linear differential equations. Thus the expression of the integral of a particular differential equation, either by arbitrary functions or by a series with arbitrary coefficients, is in strict analogy with the case presented in the last two examples. To pursue this comparison further would minister to curiosity rather than to utility. We shall prefer to contemplate the problem of the solution of elective equations under its most general aspect, which is the object of the succeeding investigations. To solve the general equation phi of xy equals zero with reference to y. If we expand the given equation with reference to x and y, we have phi of zero zero open brackets one minus x close brackets open brackets one minus y close brackets plus phi of zero one open brackets one minus x close brackets y plus phi of one zero x open brackets one minus y close brackets plus phi of one one x y equals zero seventy two the coefficients five zero zero etc being numerical constants now the general expression of y as a function of x is y equals vx plus v prime open brackets one minus x close brackets v and v prime being unknown symbols to be determined substituting this value in 72 we obtain a result which may be written in the following form open brackets phi of one zero plus open brackets phi of one one minus phi of one zero close brackets v close brackets x plus open brackets phi of zero zero plus open brackets phi of zero zero minus phi of zero zero close brackets v prime close brackets open brackets one minus x close brackets equals zero and in order that this equation may be satisfied without any way restricting the generality of x we must have phi of one zero plus open brackets phi of one one minus phi of one zero close brackets v equals zero Five zero zero plus open brackets five zero one minus five zero zero close brackets v prime equals zero, from which we deduce v equals five one zero over five one zero minus five one one, and v prime equals five zero zero over five zero one minus five zero zero. Wherefore, y equals. 510 over 510 minus 511 x plus 500 over 500 minus 501 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets 73 had we expanded the original equation with respect to y only we should have had phi of x0 plus open brackets phi of x1 minus phi of x zero close brackets close brackets y equals zero but it might have startled those who are unaccustomed to the processes of symbolical algebra had we from this equation deduced y equals phi of x zero over phi of x zero minus phi of x one because of the apparently meaningless character of the second member such a result would however have been perfectly lawful and the expansion of the second member would have given us the solution above obtained i shall in the following example employ this method and shall only remark that those to whom it may appear doubtful may verify its conclusions by the previous method 
to solve the general equation 5xyz equals 0, or in other words, to determine the value of z as a function of x and y. Expanding the given equation with reference to z, we have 5xy0 plus open brackets 5xy1 minus 5xy0 close brackets close brackets z equals 0. Therefore, z equals 5xy0 over 5xy0 minus 5xy1, 74. And expanding the second member as a function of x and y, by aid of the general theorem, we have z equals phi of 110 over phi of 110 minus phi of 111 xy plus phi of 100 over phi of 100 minus phi of 101 x open brackets 1 minus y plus 5010 over 5010 minus 5011 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets y plus 5000 over 5000 minus 5001 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus y close brackets 75 and this is the complete solution required by the same method, we may resolve an equation involving any proposed number of elective symbols. In the interpretation of any general solution of this nature, the following cases may present themselves. The values of the moduli 500, 501, etc. being constant, one or more of the coefficients of the solution may assume the form 0 over 0 or 1 over 0. In the former case, the indefinite symbol 0 over 0 must be replaced by an arbitrary elective symbol V. In the latter case, the term which is multiplied by a factor 1 over 0, or by any numerical constant except 1, must be separately equated to 0, and will indicate the existence of a subsidiary proposition. This is evident from 62. Example given x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0. All x's are y's to determine y as a function of x. Let phi of xy equal x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets. Then phi of 1 0 equals 1. Phi of 1 1 equals 0. Phi of 0 1 equals 0. Phi of 0 0 equals 0. Whence by 73 y equals 1 over 1 minus 0 x plus 0 over 0 minus 0 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets equals x plus 0 over 0 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets equals x plus v open brackets 1 minus x close brackets 76 v being an arbitrary elective symbol the interpretation of this result is that the class Y consists of the entire class X with an indefinite remainder of not X's. This remainder is indefinite in the highest case, i.e. it may vary from zero up to the entire class of not X's. Example given X open brackets 1 minus Z close brackets plus Z equals Y. The class Y consisting of the entire class Z with such not Z's as our X's to find Z. Here, phi of x, y, z equals x open brackets 1 minus z close brackets minus y plus z. Whence we have the following set of values for the moduli. Phi of 1, 1, 0 equals 0. Phi of 1, 1, 1 equals 0. Phi of 1, 0, 0 equals 1. Phi of 1, 0, 1 equals 1. Phi of 0, 1, 0 equals negative 1. Phi of 0, 1, 1 equals 0. Phi of 0, 0, 0 equals 0. Phi of 0, 0, 1 equals 1. And substituting these in the general formula 75, we have z equals 0 over 0 xy plus 1 over 0 x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets plus open brackets 1 minus x close brackets y. The infinite coefficient of the second term indicates the equation x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0 
or x's are y's and the indeterminate coefficient of the first term being replaced by v an arbitrary elective symbol we have z equals open brackets 1 minus x close brackets y plus v x y the interpretation of which is that the class z consists of all the y's which are not x's and an indefinite remainder of y's which are x's of course this indefinite remainder may vanish the two results we have obtained are logical inferences not very obvious ones from the original propositions and they give us all the information which it contains respecting the class z and its constituent elements example given x equals y open brackets 1 minus z close brackets plus z open brackets 1 minus y close brackets the class X consists of all Y's which are not Z's, and all Z's which are not Y's, required to the class Z. We have phi of X, Y, Z equals X minus Y, open brackets, 1 minus Z, close brackets, equals Z, open brackets, 1 minus Y, close brackets. 5110 equals 0, 5111 equals 1, 5100 equals 1. 5101 equals 0, 5010 equals negative 1, 5011 equals 0, 5000 equals 0, 5001 equals negative 1. Whence, by substituting in 75, z equals x, open brackets, 1 minus y, close brackets, plus y, open brackets, 1 minus x, close brackets, 78. The interpretation of which is the class Z consists of all X's which are not Y's, and of all Y's which are not X's, an inference strictly logical. Example given, Y open brackets 1 minus Z open brackets 1 minus X close brackets close brackets equals 0. All Y's are Z's and not X's. Proceeding as before to form the moduli we have on substitution in the general formulae, z equals 1 over 0 x y plus 0 over 0 x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets plus y open brackets 1 minus x close brackets plus 0 over 0 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus y close brackets or z equals y open brackets 1 minus x close brackets plus v x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets plus v prime open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals y open brackets 1 minus x close brackets plus open brackets 1 minus y close brackets phi of x 79 with the equation x y equals 0 from these it appears that no y's are x's, and that the class z consists of all y's which are not x's, and of an indefinite remainder of not y's. This method, in combination with Lagrange's method of indeterminate multipliers, may be very elegantly applied to the treatment of simultaneous equations. Our limits only permit us to offer a single example, but the subject is well deserving of further investigation. Given the equations x open brackets 1 minus z close brackets equals 0, z open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0, all x's are z's, all z's are y's. To determine the complete value of z with any subsidiary relations connecting x and y. Adding the second equation multiplied by an indeterminate constant lambda to the first we have x open brackets 1 minus z close brackets plus lambda z open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0. When determining the moduli and substituting in 75, z equals xy plus 1 over 1 minus lambda x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets plus 0 over 0 open brackets 1 minus x close brackets y 80 from which we derive z equals xy plus v open brackets 1 minus x close brackets y with the subsidiary relation 
x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0. The former of these expresses that the class Z consists of all x's that are y's with an indefinite remainder of not x's that are y's. The latter, that all x's are y's, being in fact the conclusion of the syllogism of which the two given propositions are the premises. By assigning an appropriate meaning to our symbols, all the equations we have discussed would admit of interpretation as hypothetical, but it may suffice to have considered them as examples of categoricals. That peculiarity of elective symbols, in virtue of which every elective equation is reducible to a system of equations t1 equals 0, t2 equals 0, etc., so constituted that all the binary products t1, t2, t1, t3, etc., vanish, represents a general doctrine in logic with reference to the ultimate analysis of propositions, of which it may be desirable to offer some illustration. Any of these constituents, t1, t2, etc., consist only of factors of the forms x, y, dot, 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 1 minus w, 1 minus z, etc. In categoricals, it therefore represents a compound class, i.e. a class defined by the presence of certain qualities, and by the absence of certain other qualities. Each constituent equation t equals zero, etc., expresses a denial of the existence of some class so defined, and the different classes are mutually exclusive. Thus, all categorical propositions are resolvable into a denial of the existence of certain compound classes, no member of one such class being a member of another. The proposition, all x's are y's, expressed by the equation x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals zero, is resolved into a denial of the existence of a class whose members are x's and not y's. The proposition some x's are y's, expressed by v equals xy, is resolvable as follows on expansion. v minus xy equals vx open brackets 1 minus y close brackets plus vy open brackets 1 minus x plus v open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus y close brackets minus xy open brackets 1 minus v close brackets. Therefore, vx open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0, vy open brackets 1 minus x close brackets equals 0, v open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0, open brackets 1 minus v close brackets xy equals 0. The three first imply that there is no class whose members belong to a certain unknown sum, and are first, x's and not y's, second, y's and not x's, third, not x's and not y's. The fourth implies that there is no class whose members are x's and y's without belonging to this unknown sum. From the same analysis, it appears that all hypothetical propositions may be resolved into denials of the coexistence of the truth or falsity of certain assertions. Thus the proposition, if x is true, y is true, is resolvable by its equation x open brackets 1 minus y close brackets equals 0 into a denial that the truth of x and the falsity of y coexist. And the proposition either x is true or y is true, members exclusive, is resolvable into a denial first that x and y are both true, secondly that x and y are both false. But it may be asked, is it not something more than a system of negations necessary to the constitution of an affirmative proposition? Is not a positive element required? Undoubtedly there is need of one, and this positive element is supplied in categoricals by the assumption, which may be regarded as a prerequisite of reasoning in such cases, that there is a universe of conceptions, and that each individual it contains either belongs to a proposed class or does not belong to it. In hypotheticals, by the assumption, equally prerequisite, that there is a universe of conceivable cases, and that any given proposition is either true or false. Indeed, the question of the existence of conceptions is preliminary to any statement of their qualities or relations. Aristotle, Anal Post, Lib 2, Cap 2. 
it will appear from the above that propositions may be regarded as resting at once upon a positive and upon a negative foundation. Nor is such a view either foreign to the spirit of deductive reasoning or inappropriate to its method, the latter ever proceeding by limitations while the former contemplates the particular as derived from the general. Demonstration of the method of indeterminate multipliers as applied to simultaneous elective equations. To avoid needless complexity, it will be sufficient to consider the case of three equations involving three elective symbols those equations being the most general of the kind. It will be seen that the case is marked by every feature affecting the character of the demonstration, which would present itself in the discussion of the more general problem, in which the number of equations and the number of variables are both unlimited. Let the given equations be phi of xyz equals zero, psi of xyz equals zero, chi of xyz equals zero, one. Multiplying the second and third of these by the arbitrary constants h and k, and adding to the first, we have phi of x, y, z plus h psi of x, y, z plus k chi of x, y, z equals zero, two. And we are to show that in solving this equation with reference to any variable z by the general theorem, 75, we shall obtain not only the general value of z independent of h and k, but also any subsidiary relations which may exist between x and y independently of z. If we represent the general equation 2 under the form f of x, y, z equals 0, its solution may by 75 be written in the form z equals x, y over 1 minus f of 1, 1, 1 over f of 1, 1, 0 plus x open brackets 1 minus y over 1 minus f of 1, 0, 1 over f of 1, 0, 0 plus y open brackets 1 minus x close brackets over 1 minus f of 0, 1, 1 over f of 0, 1, 0 plus open brackets 1 minus x close brackets open brackets 1 minus y close brackets over 1 minus f of 0, 0, 1 over f of 0, 0, 0 and as we have seen, that any one of these four terms is to be equated to zero, whose modulus, which we may represent by m, does not satisfy the condition m to the nth power equals m, or, which is here the same thing, whose modulus has any other value than zero or one. Consider the modulus, suppose m1, of the first term, viz. 1 over 1 minus f of 1, 1, 1 over f of 1, 1, 0. And giving to the symbol f its full meaning, we have m1 equals 1 over 1 minus phi of 1, 1, 1 plus h psi of 1, 1, 1 plus h chi of 1, 1, 1 over phi of 1, 1, 0 plus h psi of 1, 1, 0 plus h chi of 1, 1, 0. It is evident that the condition m1 to the nth power equals m1 cannot be satisfied unless the right-hand member be independent of h and k. And in order that this may be the case, we must have the function phi of 1, 1, 1 plus h psi of 1, 1, 1 plus k chi of 1, 1, 1 over phi of 1, 1, 0 plus h psi of 1, 1, 0 plus k chi of 1, 1, 0 independent of h and k. Assume then phi of 1, 1, 1 plus h psi of 1, 1, 1 plus k chi of 1, 1, 1 over phi of 1, 1, 0 plus h psi of 1, 1, 0 plus k chi of 1, 1, 0 equals c. c being independent of h and k, we have on clearing of fractions and equating coefficients phi of 1, 1, 1 equals c phi of 1, 1, 0 psi of 1, 1, 1 equals c psi of 1, 1, 0, chi of 1, 1, 1 equals c chi of 1, 1, 0, whence, eliminating c, phi of 1, 1, 1 over phi of 1, 1, 0 equals psi of 1, 1, 1 over psi of 1, 1, 0 equals chi of 1, 1, 1 over chi of 1, 1, 0, being equivalent to the triple system phi of 1, 1, 1, psi of 1, 1, 0, minus phi of 1, 1, 0, psi of 1, 1, 1 equals 0, 
psi of 111, chi of 110, minus psi of 110, chi of 111, equals 0. Chi of 111, phi of 110, minus chi of 111, phi of 111, equals 0. And it appears that if any one of these equations is not satisfied, the modulus m1 will not satisfy the condition m1 to the nth power equals m1. Whence the first term of the value of z must be equated to 0, and we shall have xy equals 0. A relation between x and y independent of z. Now if we expand in terms of z each pair of the primitive equations 1, we shall have phi of xy0 plus open bracket phi of xy1 minus phi of xy0 close bracket z equals 0 psi of xy1 plus open bracket psi of xy1 minus psi of xy0 close bracket z equals 0 chi of xy0 plus open bracket chi of xy1 minus chi of xy0 close bracket z equals 0 and successively eliminating z between each pair of these equations we have phi of xy1 psi of xy0 minus phi of xy0 psi of xy1 equals 0 psi of xy1 chi of xy0 minus psi of xy0 chi of xy1 equals 0 chi of xy1 phi of xy0 equals chi of xy0 phi of xy1 equals 0 which express all the relations between x and y that are formed by the elimination of z Expanding these and writing in full the first term, we have open bracket phi of 111 psi of 110 minus phi of 110 psi of 111 close brackets xy plus etc equals 0. Open bracket psi of 111 chi of 110 minus psi of 110 chi of 111 close brackets xy plus etc equals 0 open brackets chi of 111 phi of 110 minus chi of 110 phi of 111 close brackets xy plus etc equals 0 and it appears from proposition 2 that if the coefficient of xy in any of these equations does not vanish we shall have the equation xy equals 0 but the coefficients in question are the same as the first members of the system 3, and the two sets of conditions exactly agree. Thus, as respects the first term of the expansion, the method of indeterminate coefficients leads to the same result as ordinary elimination, and it is obvious that from their similarity of form, the same reasoning will apply to all the other terms. Suppose, in the second place, that the conditions 3 are satisfied so that m1 is independent of h and k. It will then indifferently assume the equivalent form m1 equals 1 over 1 minus phi of 111 over phi of 110 equals 1 over 1 minus psi of 111 over psi of 110 equals 1 over 1 minus chi of 111 over chi of 110. These are the exact forms of the first modulus in the expanded values of z, deduced from the solution of the three primitive equations singly. If this common value of m1 is 1, or 0 over 0 equals z, the term will be retained in z. If any other constant value except 0, we have a relation xy equals 0, not given by elimination, but deducible from the primitive equations singly, and similarly for all other terms. Thus, in every case, the expression of the subsidiary relations is a necessary accompaniment of the process of solution. It is evident, upon consideration, that a similar proof will apply to the discussion of a system indefinite as to the number of both of its symbols and of its equations. Postscript. Some additional explanations and references which have occurred to me during the printing of this work are subjoined. The remarks on the connection between logic and language, part 4, are scarcely sufficiently explicit. Both the one and the other I hold to depend very materially upon our ability to form general notions by the faculty of abstraction. Language is an instrument of logic, 
but not an indispensable instrument. To the remarks on cause, page 11, I derive about the following. Considering cause as an invariable antecedent in nature, which is Brown's view, whether associated or not with the idea of power, as suggested by Sir John Herschel, the knowledge of its existence is a knowledge which is properly expressed by the word that, not by why. It is very remarkable that the two greatest authorities in logic, modern and ancient, agreeing in the latter interpretation, differ most widely in its application to mathematics. Sir W. Hamilton says that mathematics exhibit only the that. Aristotle says the why belongs to mathematicians, for they have the demonstrations of causes, and our postlip 1 cap 14. It must be added that Aristotle's view is consistent with the sense, albeit an erroneous one, which he in various parts of his writings he virtually assigns to the word cause, viz. an antecedent in logic, a sense according to which the premises might be said to be the cause of the conclusion. This view appears to me to give even to his physical inquiries much of their peculiar character. Upon reconsideration, I think that the view on page 42 as to the presence or absence of a medium of comparison would readily follow from Professor de Morgan's doctrine, and I therefore relinquish all claim to a discovery. The mode in which it appears in this treatise is, however, remarkable. I have seen reason to change the opinion expressed in pages 43, 46. The system of equations there given for the expression of propositions in syllogism is always preferable to the one before employed, first in generality, secondly in facility of interpretation. In virtue of the principle that a proposition is either true or false, Every elective symbol employed in the expression of hypotheticals admits only of the value 0 and 1, which are the only quantitative forms of an elective symbol. It is in fact possible, setting out from the theory of probabilities, which is purely quantitative, to arrive at a system of methods and processes for the treatment of hypotheticals exactly similar to those which have been given. The two systems of elective symbols and of quantity articulate, if I may use the expression, in the points 1 and 0. It seems to me to be implied by this that unconditional truth, categorical, and probable truth meet together in the constitution of contingency, hypotheticals. The general doctrine of elective symbols and all the more characteristic applications are quite independent of any quantitative origin. The End